thought you were going to go. <laughs> All right, I'll just start it. You don't have to stop it. All right, everybody, <laughs> welcome into Around the Felt. We are in studio today for a big pod. Colin's laughing because we just sat here for the first five seconds of the pod looking at each other, saying, who's going to say the intro? Yeah. But, you know, big dog's got to step up. Reagan <laughs> big took over the intro, but, you know, it's Labor Day. It's a good day to talk about some football, some season-long predictions. We've already gone through all the divisions. We know who we have in the playoffs. We're going to reiterate that for you guys and then do the awards, which yeah. should be interesting. You know, not to toot my own horn, Reagan, but last year I did hit Lamar MVP. I hit McCaffrey, mm-hmm. Offensive Player of the Year. And I believe I hit Defensive Rookie of the Year as well and Will yeah. Anderson Jr. So I hit three. This year I did go a little bit juicier, though, so I don't know if I'll hit three this year, but it'll be nice. That's why we got these nice microphones now. Big dog over here <laughs> cashed out last year, you know, really invested in the company. So uh, with my uh, bets, you know, wasn't as good, but, you know. Yeah, Derek Carr MVP. I hope you don't I've have always, that again this I've year. Always been a, I've always been a man of value, but, you know, this year maybe we'll go uh, a little little chalkier. A <laughs> little chalkier. Okay, so let's go yeah. to the news first, Reagan. Brandon Ayuk situation is finally over with. He re-signs four years, $120 million, 30 per year. Seems like that's about right for what Ayuk should make in the tier of the top receivers. He did not want to take more money to go to a bad team like New England. He didn't want to play in Cleveland. Uh, I don't know about the Commanders. Apparently, they never really made a big push. But, yeah, San Francisco gets their guy locked down for 2024 and beyond. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, w- <laughs> I even had Garrett make a graphic for the Steelers. So, our poor graphics guy, we could have <laughs> used him making a graphic on something else. But he had the Brandon Ayuk jersey swap ready to go. But, you know, for the Niners, it's great um, getting getting him locked down. It I is. mean, he's it's huge. He's their number one. I mean, I know Debo's the more household name at this point by Ayuk is the number one on that team. I expect him to have a big season now, especially now that he got paid. So sky's the limit for him this year. I think top 12 upside for sure. Yeah. Now they got to figure out the Trent Williams situation because he wants more money, which he is the best left tackle in football. He kind of deserves it, but you know, the Niners, a lot of drama before the season, not ideal, but finally they got Ayuk paid and that's over with other Niners news. Ricky Pearsall released from the hospital after getting shot in the chest after an attempted robbery Prayers for Ricky. Prayers for Ricky. Yeah, just thank God he's good. You know, he's all right. We don't know how long he'll be out, but who cares at this point? They got Ayuk back. They'll be fine. He can uh, rest up and be good to go, but just a scary situation for everyone involved. Yeah, man. You never know what's going to happen with a robbery. Crazy. It's a crazy crazy world we live in. Those streets of San Francisco, man. Yeah. So, Maje Pirine signs with the Chiefs after being released by the division rival Broncos. And also, Clyde edwards Lair was added to the non-football illness list. So, he is out for the first four games for fantasy purposes, Reagan. I know a lot of people are kind of snagging, snagging up Samaje Pirine now. I would. I mean, he was a guy that's been a good third down back. I think he had 50 catches last year with the Broncos alone. And he was the Bengals' third down back. So, for Pacheco, you guys taking him in the second round with super high expectations i think you got to limit him now because i definitely think p ryan's gonna have a role especially in the beginning of the season i don't view clyde as a threat i never have but p ryan actually is a threat i think he'll step right into that number two role and definitely be involved yeah because everyone wants to talk about what pacheco's splits looked like once mckinnon was out of the picture and that's what pacheco took off at the end of last season but now p ryan kind of fills that void that clyde was not going to fill that void so i was never worried about clyde either but this certainly is a problem this is why i didn't take clyde and I mean, uh, not Clyde. I didn't take Pacheco in the second round of any drafts. Yeah. Certainly not ideal. I mean, he'll still have the number one role, but, you know, P. Ryan is an established veteran that is a good pass catcher, which Pacheco has shown he doesn't really do as much. So, yeah, this definitely hurts him fantasy-wise. If you took him in redraft, feel bad for you. Feel bad for you. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, I I didn't. I stayed away from Pacheco. The ADP was just – Too like, high. It was just – yeah. Too I mean, I, I was never looking at him in the second round. No, thank you. No, thank you. Finally, last thing in news. My New York football giants have re-signed a Dory Jackson to a one-year deal. This one didn't really see coming, to be honest with you. None of the beat reporters did. They thought a Dory kind of struggled last year, and, you know, the team wasn't necessarily happy with his effort down the stretch. But, you know what? The Giants needed help in the secondary, particularly a corner, a very young cornerback group. A Dory was still waiting for a team, so... With a little bit over a week before their first game, they had a reunion, and I don't mind it. No, the veteran I don't presence, mind it at all. if he looks more like he did in 2022, which he played well, then this could be a really good sign for the Giants. And the secondary is their biggest weakness right now, from from what the beat reporters are saying that have been at camp. Yeah, no, I mean, I, it's not you know, it's not major news, but it's something that's obviously a hole for the Giants. He's a guy that knows the system, and you know, we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, yeah. we'll see what happens. 
All right, that wraps up the news. We got Zach in studio today. Big Z. Yes, sir. Here we are. Big Z in studio. You ready to roll Big with the Z. questions? Yeah, I am ready to roll. We're going to open it up with questions from Big G. And Big is, G. Big G. And that is Garrett Losher, not Cole. And we're going to start it off with uh, <laughs> how many INTs does a corner need to win deploy over an edge rusher? See, I was thinking about that today because part of me wanted to go with Sauce Gardner. He was plus 5,000, and like the top 15 guys were all – pass rushers and i think kyle hamilton was the first non-pass rusher that i saw yeah which i believe so i mean deron bland had how many pick six last year five or six and oh pick six is alone he had six yes. yeah he and set he, the record or tied the record yeah and he still didn't win it i mean so, that's because also because he was terrible in coverage yeah so like the last guy to do it was stefan gilmore back in 2019 and he was just absolutely locked down so sauce gardner for me is the guy that could do it but he's never been a huge int guy he just locks yeah. dudes down you mm -hmm. know so for him to get there he has to have at least five interceptions in my mind and be that shut down corner he has been the first two years in the league but i don't know dude we've even seen trayvon Diggs have how many ints did he have two years ago he had like eight ago. or nine he was he may have gotten the double digits honestly he was up there yeah I mean, like he was pushing he for the did. record yeah so and he still didn't win so yeah. it's very difficult yeah, you'd have to be up there in INTs, but you have to be shut down. Because the past two years, the past couple corners in Dallas, well, they're big on the interceptions. They're not shut down or even close to shut down. But you take it because they're such, they're such yeah. wild cards that you give, you, you'll you allow them to get burnt half the time because if they're getting a pick six, it's like, all right, you know, it's a give and take there. Yeah. All right, question number two. Can Jordan Love become an MVP finalist this season? Absolutely. If the Packers – live up to the expectations that they have right now if he builds off the second half of the season he had last year if you know he just dominated dallas in the playoffs and he looked legit like he looked a full part now all those young players have another year in the league they should get better if the packers are threats if they go 11 12 even 13 wins which i don't think is out of the question it's their ceiling but it's it's in it's possible then yeah, Jordan Love could be in, in the yeah. MVP what was conversation. He? Oh, I agree 100%. What was he, 17 touchdowns to one pick down the stretch, whatever yeah, it was. Yeah, disgusting. I mean, they have so much depth, too, because even injuries, like if you lose a guy or two in the skilled position group, they're so deep. I mean, at the running back position, obviously they lost Jones, but they get Jacobs, you get Lloyd in the draft, A.J. Dillon out for the year. Is that really a loss? No. But um, but just lot, yeah. they have like five or six receivers between Watson, Reed, Wicks, Dobbs, Heath. You know, they got, they got some guys there. And then both tight ends and Musgrave and Kraft are definitely – solid options so he's got weapons just all over the field and a ton of depth so he definitely has and the lines improved too so i mean he, he definitely has the perfect storm to have a chance to do it this year yeah all right last tip from big g do you think any wide receiver can eclipse the 2000 yard mark this season i would say so i, I would say so i mean barring injury we've seen so many guys come close i mean what is tyreek was close and i think he played 16 last year so but then again, there will be an asterisk. If the guy can do it in the first 16 games, then, yeah, it's impressive. If somebody does it in 17, there's going to be a little bit of asterisk there. But I think with having that extra game, it's very possible. It's possible. I don't think it happens. Just Tyreek was on an unreal pace last year. He came up, a, I think, 150-ish yards short. So, I mean, for me, I think C.D. Lamb is going to lead the league in receiving this year, and he had over 1,700 last year, but I don't see him getting over 2,000. It's possible. Like, CD could, Tyreek could, but outside of those two, I don't think anyone else has a realistic shot. Yeah. No, that's fair. That's fair. All right, we're going to move on to Caleb Dean. Question number one, do you expect to see significant regression from the Chiefs this year, and what is the percent chance that Patrick Mahomes falls outside the top ten quarterbacks? Zero. Um, is that for fantasy? Or? I don't know. It doesn't Oh, doesn't uh, let me see. I mean, I'm assuming it's probably, it has to be for fantasy. Um, yeah, I'm assuming for fantasy he means, so we'll, we'll go off of that. Um, I mean, there's definitely a chance he falls out because this is uh, for fantasy. Obviously, Patrick Mahomes is a stud from NFL terms, but he finished eight last year. And to me, this is the deepest the quarterbacks for fantasy has ever been where you can get like Justin Herbert's going at like 17, 18. I know with uh, Harbaugh coming in and stuff, we expect them to be a run first team and the weapons aren't as good. But there's so many guys like Stafford, uh, Rodgers. There's so many veterans that like are kind of later on where that are pocket passers. And like, yeah, Mahomes is very athletic but it's not like he has the rushing upside as some of the other guys so he's going to be very reliant on the yards and the touchdowns so there's the off chance that it's similar to last year and even with the weapons they're trying to run first and play more defense and you know maybe he does fall out of the top 10 this year but the team is still 13 and 4 because their defense is dominant and they're relying more on the run game this year yeah i think it goes the opposite direction he was qb8 last year i think he climbs back in the top five with the improved weapons around him 
they won 11 games last year and it was the worst offensive performance they've had in the Mahomes era. I anticipate the Chiefs to be better. I have them at 13 and 4. I have them as the number one seed in the AFC. I have Mahomes up there in the MVP voting. I have Mahomes being up in the top five in fantasy quarterbacks. I don't think we're going to see a regression here. I think they're going to send more to that level that we've seen in years prior. I mean, yeah, I can. I just completely st- stayed away from him in fantasy. He burnt me bad last year, so I was like, you know what? At that ADP, I'd rather take Hertz or Allen, especially because they're the ones with the high rushing upside that we expect to be pushing double digit rushing touchdowns this year. Yeah, I also stayed away from him in fantasy, but you know, I, I think he will be back in that top five range. Uh, next up, start bench cut Lamar, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts. Uh, for fantasy or just in probably fantasy? Yeah, it's fantasy. So that's three of the top four quarterbacks yeah. being drafted yeah, yeah, right yeah. now, right? So the pick, your, pick your poison. You know, you want to go with the reigning MVP, Lamar Jackson, but Josh Allen has been QB1 several times in the past yeah. five-plus years. But now he doesn't have Stephon Diggs, Jalen Hurts to tush-push, you know, but no Jason Kelsey. It's tough. You know, those are the three dominant rushing quarterbacks right now at the top. To me, I'm going start Hurts, bench Allen, cut Lamar for fantasy I'm just big on Hurts this year. I expect him to be – well, obviously, right now he is the best weapons. I don't even think that's a debate at all. Yes, that's not a debate. Um, with Allen, a lot of my worries are just the weapons aren't as good. While I do think he'll still be relevant for fantasy because he's going to run the ball more, it just worries me that he doesn't have that true alpha number one. So are the numbers going to be as great as they've been? You would expect it, but that worries me a little bit. And then with Lamar, I mean, the, the Ravens are just so good defensively, and they, they want to run the ball that – there could be weeks where they really don't need him to do anything, and then the team's going to be good. So, to me, I, I don't know. Lamar's just the one I'm cutting. I, I, I just really like what Hurts and Allen have done in the running game with the touchdown upside. Because Lamar's touchdowns, rushing-wise, have just haven't been what they were early on in his career. The Ravens also lost three starting offensive linemen this offseason, yeah. which does worry me a little bit. But also, at the same time, Derrick Henry's in the picture, which is the biggest rushing threat he's had mm-hmm. alongside him in his career. And he's won two MVPs. I'm going to still start Josh Allen despite the alpha wide receiver being there because I just think he's that dominant. Jalen Hurts, number two, and I'm going to cut Josh Allen. So just flip flop those two for me. Are you cutting? Wait. You're starting to, I think you should start Josh Allen and start too. I'm sorry. I'm cutting Lamar Jackson. <laughs> I was going to yeah, say, cutting, I was like, cutting Lamar Jackson. Cutting shit. Lamar Jackson. That was confusing, bro. All right. We're going to hop over to um, Austin. See, his first question, I guess now we have the first week of college football, you know done with he asked who do you guys think is going to win the heisman damn dude a lot of quarterbacks looked good this weekend i mean miller moss last night for usc looked good cam ward for miami looked good it's so early to tell Shador. Shador looked good. Travis Hunter, three touchdowns, you know, playing both ways. Yeah. I'm it's, a, it, I, I don't know, pick. dude. It was a great weekend of college I know football. my pick, Jackson Dart. I'm sticking with old Jackson I got old Miss. Dart, yeah. I got old Miss winning the whole thing this year, so I'm going with Jackson Dart, and he lit it up. He was throwing darts all over the field. <laughs> but, no, he. I think he was like – I think he ended up having like six touchdowns and like over 400 yards. But then again, you know, I, I forget who old Miss played, but they won it was a garbage zero, team. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's just doing what he's supposed to do. See, I have, I think I have Texas winning it all this year, but I don't think, I don't think Quinn Ewers wins the Heisman. I don't know, dude. I'm gonna go Travis Hunter. I think he's just that guy. But Colorado, you know, people are saying even if Colorado doesn't have a winning record, Travis Hunter could win Heisman just with what he's doing. We haven't well, seen yeah, it in decades. Both sides you know, of the ball. And it's he's crazy. already got three touchdowns this year, so if he's in double digit touchdowns, yeah, it's definitely a good case. Travis Hunter will go top ten next year, either as a corner or wide receiver in the draft. It's more about, actually crazy. You know, he'll probably use him on both sides. He's yeah, such a chess piece. All right, next up, who is a sleeper to win the NFL MVP? I think we're getting that later. That's – yeah. Well, I mean, we um, – But we have our picks. But yeah, if you want we to talk do a about sleeper. A sleeper. Right yeah, probably Derek Carr. Yeah, it's no. a good Derek Carr. Uh, I don't know because – I mean, sleeper because, like, obviously you got to – that was honestly more of my sleeper pick last year, but I just made it my actual pick. Yeah, because you're thinking – got to think of a quarterback that's not one of the top tier guys. Yeah, and I mean, like, because I don't even want to say any other position because I really don't think – I would say – sleepers to me would be Kirk Cousins, Justin Herbert, and even Kyler Murray, just guys that are plus 3,500 and above. Uh, just because we've seen all those guys play at MVP levels before, so you know that they can get to that level. Uh, they're all on teams right now. Well, Kirk's probably in the best situation, but Herbert and Murray are in situations where there's a lot of question marks. So if they're able to will their team into the playoffs good and point. return the MVP form, like it's a little more impressive than if like an established guy with a good supporting cast around them does it. So I don't know. Those are some dark horse sleepers with great value to me. Plus 3,500 for cousins plus 3,500 for Herbert and plus 5,000 for Kyler. 
What is Anthony Richardson? Uh, also plus 3,500. Plus 35. Yes, another guy in that range that if the Colts were to win the division with the Texans having these such high expectations, Richardson improves as a passer, still did what he did last year in the minimal time on the rushing game with Steichen leading the helm. I mean, the Colts would have to win 11-12 games, which would be tough, but it's possible. Certain, it's possible, yeah, it's you possible. know? So a quarterback like that, that has a team not expected to make the playoffs that wills them there and puts up gaudy stats, particularly in the rushing Gordy. department as well. You like, that word? you like that word? Gaudy. All right, so we have a uh, – we're going to go on over to Max Hayford here, and we're going to start off with better bet, MVP, Jordan Love, or Anthony Richardson? Oh, Jordan Love for <laughs> we, sure. just, we just had this conversation. Jordan Love for sure. I'm going to say that, yes, Jordan Love is still the better bet, but I just made my argument for Richardson if you're feeling frisky and you want to sprinkle. Okay, now we're going to go over to old boy, Garrett, <laughs> Garrett Wilson or Justin Jefferson? Garrett Wilson or Justin Jefferson I'd say for Wilson. Offensive Player of the Year? It's just a quarterback play. You know, you're just betting on the quarterback, not the talent. Like, we know Jefferson's going to be insane this year, but do we really think? I think he just bumped into the Xbox. Zach wants to play some Xbox right Zach now. Zach just booty bumped the Yeah, Xbox. he's twerking on Garrett's old Xbox. That's crazy. Um, but you're basically betting on the quarterback. Do we really think that Justin Jefferson's going to be able to get to that level with Sam Darnold as his quarterback? I mean, we saw it with Kirk. Uh, he could. He could. I mean, hey, it's just Then with Nick Mullins, bro. It's he went tough. off with Nick Mullins. It's tough. It's tough for me to believe that. So I'm going to go with Wilson just because you know the Jets are going to be in a good spot this year and that Aaron Rodgers is his quarterback. But it's still Jettis. It's still his Jettis. So it's hard to doubt the guy. Yeah, I'm going Jefferson here. We've, we've seen Jefferson lead the league in receiving. I think he's quarterback proof. And if... The Vikings are somewhat competitive. It's because Justin Jefferson is leading that offense with no J.J. McCarthy, no T.J. Hawkinson. Yeah, you got Aaron Jones in the picture and Addison, but Justin Jefferson is quarterback proof where with the Jets, it's like, okay, you have Brees Hall. You have a good offensive line. You got Aaron Rodgers, a former MVP in the picture where it's all on Jefferson's shoulders almost, in my opinion, for the Vikings to have any success with yeah. Darnold at the helm. So because of that, if they are putting up a lot of points, Justin Jefferson – drives that engine i'm gonna go jettis yeah jettis is plus 1400 wilson plus 3000 and also wilson has to compete with Brees. if the team's good that means you know Brees is there the vikings like you said they don't really like hawkinson's gonna miss time addison you know he kind of he, he's not bad but he, i don't think he's a big threat to take away from jefferson and aaron jones i think is still gonna be relevant and good but he's not at his prime anymore he's on the downslide so yeah It'll be interesting, but I'm going with Wilson still. But uh, now over to Beach Boy, TJ Watt or Micah Parsons? Yeah, TJ Watt got snubbed last year. Micah Parsons is the slight favorite right over TJ Watt and Miles Garrett. Yeah, they're both plus. I'm seeing plus 550 at the time. I didn't pick either of them for my choice, but I was between the guy I took and TJ Watt because I think TJ Watt, if he's healthy, is a perennial near 20 sack guy. But Parsons could also be that. I don't know. I'd rather take TJ Watt than Parsons with the little extra juice. Yeah, the only reason I'm leaning Parsons is because one plays for Dallas, one plays for Pittsburgh. So if the if the numbers are close at the end of the year, who are they going to give it to? America's team player or the Steelers? I mean, they always talk about the Cowboys. It's like ESPN, all those big news outlets. They're always talking Dallas, 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 Dallas. Whether it's good, whether it's bad, they're always the topic of discussion. And I think that might hurt Watt come the end of the year when – Hey, both of these guys have close to 20 sacks, but, you know, one's on the Cowboys and one's on the Steelers. All right, next up, best rookie season in each position group. I don't know, this is a lot. I don't know if you want to go just offense or what you guys want to do with that. or do you Probably, have we could just go from, like, fan, maybe, we'll, is it under, like, the fantasy tab? or? Uh, no, it's just like a general question. All right, well, we okay. could do, uh, we could do uh, at least the fantasy aspect. Quarterback, I'm going Caleb Williams. He I'll has go. the best supporting cast around him. I do believe in – I mean, if you want to go fantasy, you can make an argument for Jaden Daniels because of the rushing upside, but I'm still worried about that Washington commander's offensive line, their depth at receiver. Caleb Williams is the best position to succeed. Bo Nix has a lot of issues there. So, for quarterback, I'm going Caleb Williams. Yeah, for fantasy, I'd go Daniels, but for, like, overall NFL season, I'm going Williams. For wide receivers, do I yeah. go really biased and take Malik Neighbors because he looks <laughs> like that dude? I don't know. I think I am. I'm going Malik Neighbors. I think he gets pumped the ball. He has over 1,000 yards, 
You can make an argument for Marvin Harrison. I get it. You know. Uh, I think, yeah, you definitely you know, can make I, an argument. For I think those two. <laughs> I guess, yeah, I mean, you definitely can make <laughs> those an two at the top. But I will say, dark horse, not getting talked about as much with those guys up top. Brian Thomas Jr. in Jacksonville with Trevor Lawrence. He is your guy. He is your guy. Yeah, I mean, there's. I, I, I'll probably go with Marv just because of the fact. Look at the look at where he was drafted. Uh, look at what DeAndre Hopkins did with Kyler. I expect Kyler to target the shit out of him and McBride. Um, and their defense is trash, so I expect there to be a lot of garbage time points and stuff. But another guy, look out for Lad McConkey is a chance to be Herbert's number one. So that's more of a dark horse pick. But running back, yeah, I think it's uh, for, it's, it's tough because tough nobody's they're, they're, none of them are to start. Yeah, none of them are slated to start Outside right of Brooks, now. Who's gonna miss the first four games? Yeah, you know, I want to say Jonathan Brooks. I've been snagging him in a lot of drafts and just wait, waiting and seeing for him to come back. The draft capital's there, so I want to go Brooks, but otherwise you're just betting on someone getting hurt. Yeah, I mean, I actually do think Tyron Tracy could be. I really do think he's going to take the job from Singletary. I've been drafting him in a ton of leagues. I have no faith in Devin Singletary and what he did last year. I think he's going to struggle a lot early, and Tracy's the back, who's more juice, the younger guy, so I think it's going to be his backfield earlier, very early in the season. Yeah, and also, Marshawn Lloyd's a guy I'm looking at, too, now that A.J. Dillon's out of there. He's a guy that's going to be the second running back for Green Bay, where they have used both guys between Dylan and Jones, where both guys had significant roles. So he's a guy I expect to have a role, even if he does miss week one with the hamstring injury. Okay. Is that it? I mean, no, there's more questions. Is that it for you guys as far as that question? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, next up, we have top fantasy breakout players in each position group. So I um, I mean, my guy I've been saying is going to break out is Bryce Young this year. I actually – have really sold myself on it. I think with all the weapons they've added, I think a lot of people are kind of down on him, which is weird because he was the first overall pick last year. Like, let's not forget that. There's a reason he went one. He's actually, he's super talented. He had a ton of production at Alabama. Granted, it's Alabama. You're playing with a ton of studs around the field. And yeah, you get put into a situation with the Panthers where you don't have a lot of talent, but they've done all the right things. They brought in Dave Canales, who made Baker and Gino in year one, a top 12 fantasy quarterback, actually top 10 uh, for both of them. Uh, the weapons obviously aren't as good as those guys had, but still, Deontay Johnson, you go out and get Leggett. Brooks will be back. You address the O line. You get Hunt and Lewis to play the guard. So, kind of, there's a lot of things they've done to really make me think the team will be improved. So, that's my breakout player at the quarterback this year, and I do really think he can finish at top 12 in the position. I hope you're right. That'd be good for my dynasty team. I, I've preached on this. Anthony Richardson's my guy. I believe in Shane Steichen. The rushing abilities there. He had two top five finishes in four weeks last year before leaving with injury. And another, in which he would have been top five. So, yeah, I think Anthony Richardson with Shane Steichen and Jonathan Taylor back in the picture. So, next up, running back. Um, I got Zamir White. Uh, I fully, I'm fully, i fully buying into the hype of the last four games last year. I mean, he averaged more yards per carry than Josh Jacobs when he got the load. I mean, it was almost a whole yard per carry more than Jacobs did. Uh, he was, I think he was like 99.5 yards per game through the four-game stretch. But they were heavily utilizing him over 20 touches in every game. So, I think he's going to be at least have the early down roll, and you'd hope that they involve him more in the passing game this year. It'll time will tell, but I I really do have high hopes for him to have a breakout season, and you can get him in like the seventh eighth round. Yeah, that's tough, dude. I don't really have a, a breakout running back to be honest with you. Like I'm not sure. All right, all right. Did, we can move on. Are you tight ends or next question? Yeah, we could do a wide receiver too. I know you were you you were uh, big on Brian Thomas at the wide receiver. Yeah, yeah, I was big on Brian Thomas. Yeah. I mean, for me. Um, breakout i mean i kind of like michael wilson a lot with the cardinals um as the wide receiver too there he showed some flashes down the stretch last year um who else i mean i like josh downs josh supposedly downs, coming yeah. i'm wait <laughs> so i like the colts a lot as you could tell but apparently coming out of camp josh downs is getting targeted more so than michael Pittman was and he was richardson's favorite target but he does have a little bit of injury problems right now but he'll be back but yeah. I like I like Josh Downs a lot. Come yeah, working like, out of the slot. I like Shakir with the Bills as well. I really do think he will be Josh Allen's one this year. Especially he's an established guy. He's going to be out of the slot. He's going to step right into that Stephon Diggs role. All right. Well, next up, best ball daily fantasy questions. What is the best value pick in a best ball league? The best value pick. I mean, I actually hmm. have been trying to target like a lot. Like to me. The running backs late and guys you think that will eventually either take the job or get to play bar for injuries is my best value. I always try to get the handcuffs late and try to stack up on them. So then come playoff time when nobody has Tyron Tracy or nobody has uh, Marshawn Lloyd, you're the guy who has them and you're having a starting running back in your lineup come playoff time. 
Yeah, I like Jalen Wright in Miami. I think either one of A-Chan or Mostert will get hurt at some point. And as Miami showed last year, both running backs can play and put up gaudy fantasy numbers. There's your num- your name, uh, your word again, Reagan, <laughs> gaudy. But yeah, I-, I think two running backs in that system can both be starting in fantasy. And I believe one of them will get hurt. And Jalen Wright's 4-3 speed will be a perfect fit for that offense. All right, now we're over to Crampy. Crampy, Crampy, Crampy. What's up, Cran? All right, if you had to bet on one player... To win a game of tag, who would it be? And apparently, if you say Reek, that is quote unquote soft. <laughs> <laughs> a game of tag, one player. You can't take Tyreek Hill. What if I give me go- Derek Carr? No. <laughs> <laughs> what if I just go Devon Achan, guy that might be able to run stride for stride with Tyreek Hill? Yeah, you could. You definitely could. Uh, I would go. I would probably go Xavier Worthy. Actually, no. Give me, give me Deuce Vaughn, the little bugger. He's just gonna be running around <laughs> five six. I mean, he's. No, he'll, that's a good pick. I'll go Deuce Vaughn because he's so little and so shifty and small. Like you got to come in low to tag him because he'll just duck and level change and gone. And you're running after him. I'm going Deuce Vaughn. I'm going Deuce Vaughn. All right. Who are your top three league winners in just a normal redraft slash dynasty league? Okay, so my top three. Man, um, these are tough. They would probably all be. I mean. In all my redraft leagues, like, my bench is basically all handcuffed running backs. Like, I keep honing in on this, but, like, to me, I just think you have – that's how you win. Like, every year you see the Rashad Penny takes over at the end of the year or uh, the Kyron – well, Kyron Williams took over, like, earlier in the year. But there's always the league winners or guys that weren't drafted from the start and just completely ball I mean, out. Isaiah Likely last Foreman. year down Isaiah the stretch. Likely. I mean, you could say that, too. You yeah. could say that, too. But you know? I'm, I'm talking more of the running back position because you're not going to roster a backup tight end. You're just – in a redraft no. league, you're no, not. No, you're not. So, yeah. Um, to me, it's any handcuffs. So I'm looking at Tracy. I'm looking at Lloyd. I'm Blake looking at Bucky Irving. Blake, Blake Corum. Corum. Um, who else? Uh, you could estimate with the Broncos. I mean, I'm looking at all those guys that could potentially take over the role and be the three down back for the team. Yeah, I mean, I like young running backs in loaded offenses that will score a ton of points. So Blake Corum, Jalen Wright, those two really stick out to me. Yeah, I think Jaden Daniels, too. I think you could have a similar approach to Justin Fields where he struggles early and then all of a sudden he hits his stride and he's just running the shit out of the ball and has some big weeks down the stretch. I think he could be a league winner for sure. Yeah, Xavier Worthy, he's got a lot of boom, boom, boom potential, but then a lot of bust potential. But if he is the next Tyreek Hill in that offense, it's a league winner, you Mm -hmm, know? mm Mm-hmm. All right, and our final question, what is Pittman's ceiling versus floor? It's funny he asked this because I drafted Pittman in a league and he was shitting on me for it. So um, I'd say his ceiling is probably a – I don't know. It's hard to – with Anthony. What was he last year, wide receiver 12? Yeah, I'd say his ceiling's probably top 12. Like, I can't – I don't think he'll ever get into the top five with Richardson as his quarterback. I just don't think he's a good enough pocket passer to put him to that spot. I'd say his floor is outside the top 24, and it's just, you know – the team wants to run the ball first. They have Jonathan Taylor, a guy that we've seen put up MVP numbers, and they have Richardson, who's a guy who's obviously more talented. One of his biggest talents is his legs. So I'd say his floor is outside of the top 24 because they're just a run first team. Yeah, I'd say his floor is – I think he still remains in the top 24. But if Josh Downs is the most targeted guy, you yeah. know, then, then and that's, that's an issue. obviously they Mitchell too, so it's not – I mean, yeah, they, they've addressed the wide receiver position the past two years. So there's other guys there, and I do think Taylor – coming in healthy and without contract issues after the past two years he'll be have a way bigger role in this offense and be much more explosive than he's been i think he'll be in the 16 to 24 range yeah i think that's a soft good little cushion right there sounds good all right well let's take a quick break and we'll be back fellas all right we're back we're gonna dive into our playoff predictions let's start with the afc reagan do you want do you know do you have it up you ready yeah, to roll? I'm, up, I'm up now you ready to I'm roll up now yeah, all right yeah, yeah, yeah i just got slow thumbs you know give me your playoff. I was playing a lot of xbox earlier give so me my your... thumbs are a little sore <laughs> <laughs> Give me a playoff matchups. <laughs> uh, all right, so I got Kansas City coming in at the one seed. These dogs are going to go 13-4 and four this year. Then at the two seed, I got my New York Jets going 12-5. and five. They're finally going to get it done. They're going to run through that division. They're going to get into the playoffs and the, drought, top two. and the drought shocker. You always do as your father tells you. In th- at the three spot, I got the Bengals going 12-5. and five. And then at the four spot, winning the last division, I got the Houston Texans going 10-7. and seven. For the three wild cards, we got the Buffalo Bills going 11 and 6, the Chargers going 11 and 6 at the 6, and to wrap it up, we got the Miami Dolphins going 10 and 7. So, three from the AFC East get in, two from the uh, AFC West, and then none for, or only one from the South and the North. Yeah, you need one at least from each division. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm glad you mm-hmm. corrected yourself. Yeah. I'm 
Somewhat similar, I have different wild cards. I have the Chiefs as my one seed at 13 and 4, the Jets at the 2 at 12 and 5, the Bengals at the 3 going 11 and 6, not 12 and 5. The Colts in the 4, 10 and 7, winning the division. The 5, the Baltimore Ravens, 11 and 6, losing the tiebreaker to the Bengals. The 6, the Texans at 10 and 7, losing the tiebreaker to the Colts. And at 7, the Miami Dolphins at 10 and 7. Wow, so the biggest one. I have no Ravens. You have no Bills. So that's yeah. You so that's the thing with the AFC, bro. You're like, damn, how are we gonna leave out either the Ravens or the Bills? Like, you know, teams that have been staples of the playoffs for the last five plus years. So mm-hmm. it is tough. Mm-hmm. It is tough in the AFC right now. I ultimately gave the Dolphins the nod over the Bills. Wow. NFC. What do you got? So I got the 49ers coming in. They're gonna go 13 and four this year. They're gonna lock up that one seed. At the two seed, I got the Philadelphia Eagles going 12 and five. At the three, I got the Detroit Lions at 11 and six. At the four, I got the Falcons finally getting back into the playoffs and going 10 and seven with Kirko. At five, I got the Cowboys at 12 and five. Uh, the Philly, uh, Philly gets the tiebreaker over them to win the division. And then two teams from the NFC North finally get in. We got the Bears at 11 and six at the six, and then we got the Packers taking that last spot at 10 and seven. I have the Lions with the one seed, 13 and four. The Niners. 12 and 5. The Eagles, third, 12 and 5. The Falcons, four, 11 and 6. The Packers, five, 11 and 6. The Cowboys, six, at 10 and 7. And the Bears, seven, at 10 and 7. That leaves the Rams outside looking in for me. And that was my biggest debate was the Rams or the Bears. I went with the Bears. Yeah, it does seem like the Rams are really the only team that like you could make the case for to make the playoffs. Like I guess. The Cardinals and the Bucks were in it last year, but like that's really pushing it. Like I don't really have a lot of faith in Washington, New York, Minnesota, Panthers. Obviously, I shit on Seattle. I don't have a lot of faith in them at all. So it's just tough. The NFC, it, it almost seems like it's like eight teams fighting for seven spots. And like, yeah, you could make a case for the Bucks or the Saints to maybe still the division, but I find it hard to believe that either of those teams could win seven games to get one of the wild cards. Yeah, I mean, we see teams go from worst to first pretty often. It's just really tough to predict that at this point. <laughs> I mean, it'd take a miracle season like the Giants in 2022 to really push their way up into the playoff picture. I just, I, I can't bet on my Giants to do it this year. I can't bet on the Commanders to do it. I don't believe in the NFC South, really. Uh, the Bucks are going to be okay. I don't believe in the Saints. The Panthers got a lot of work to do. If they went from worst to first, then damn, Reagan, you might be right in your top 12 fantasy quarterback for Bryce Young because you yeah. have to lead a turnaround. But, yeah, the NFC, I think a lot less teams have a chance compared to the AFC. Okay, and what is your Super Bowl prediction, Reagan? <laughs> Are you picking your Jets? The world wants to know. Yeah, I mean, how? what kind of fan would I be? I got the Jets beating the Green Bay Packers. Oh, wow. I, the script writers couldn't have made it any better. Rodgers playing his old team. Jordan Love, is he the future of Green Bay? Yes, he is. He's playing the guy that had the job for him in front of him for three years. You know what? The story, the script writers couldn't write it any better. But I got Aaron Rodgers beating his old team in the Super Bowl in New Orleans this year. Lock it in. I'll be there. I already booked my ticket because I'm so confident. Wow, dude. <laughs> Jets over Packers. I like it. I went with the Lions over the Chiefs at plus 5,000. I did sprinkle on it. Wow. Plus 5,000. I'm a huge believer in Dan Campbell and this Lions team. Since two years ago, halfway through the season, they really turned the corner. Jared Goff got comfortable. Last season, they looked legit through the regular season. They obviously had the lead over the Niners in the NFC Championship game in the fourth quarter. You know, the Niners are dealing with a lot of drama right now. They keep getting to the Super Bowl or the, AFC, the NFC Championship game and losing – the heartbreak, I think they're just putting a lot of pressure on themselves at this point. So I do think the Lions get over the hump and they beat the Niners this year. And then the Chiefs, Mahomes just dominates the AFC. It's going to be eight straight years that he's gone to the AFC Championship game. I think his biggest threat is the Bengals and Joe Burrow. He's the only one that's proved that he can beat Mahomes in the playoffs. But I do think Mahomes does it again. They get back to the Super Bowl, but they will not be the first team to three-peat because the Lions will beat them. Wow. All right. All right. That's chalky, but whatever. No, I'm kidding. That's not. That's not. That's not too chalky. Plus five thousand. Yeah. No. I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Who is your MVP? Are you picking Aaron Rodgers again? I am. I didn't take him last year. I took Derek Carr. Come on now. I know you did. Come on now. I didn't take Rodgers. Um. Yeah. I'm going with Jalen Hurts at plus twelve hundred. I mean, he's a guy we've seen uh, finish second in the MVP voting and probably would have won the year if he didn't go down with injuries down the stretch. 
Uh, I expect him to be much improved. I think he's going to pass the ball a lot more this year with the Kellen Moore offense. We expect it to be more of a pass first. So you can't shit on him for having all these rushing touchdowns. I think with Saquon being there too, uh, his rushing numbers or his rushing touchdowns will go down. But I don't think that's exactly something that uh, MVP voters factor in because 15 tush push touchdowns is, is basically the same as five, six regular rushing touchdowns. So if they go to Saquon, that won't hurt him. But I expect the Eagles to be one of the best teams in the NFC. I expect them to be much improved. They obviously addressed the defense and free agency in the draft. And then offensively, he has so many studs around him. They get Barkley in free agency. They still have A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard. Um, and then they just traded for Dotson. So maybe he has some sort of uh, a resurgence to kind of what we saw his rookie year and, you know, why he was drafted in the first round. So I'm excited for what uh, the Eagles can be and what Jalen Hurts can be in his offense in year technically year one of Kellen Moore, but year four of his career. I like that pick at plus 1,200. Mm -hmm. I went with Joe Burrow, back and healthy for this season. When he was fully healthy last year, the team went 4-1. and one. They beat San Francisco, Buffalo, Seattle, and Arizona. Their only loss being to Houston. So before Burrow hurt that wrist, the team was winning games, which is what they've done every time Burrow's been healthy. They win games, and they're the biggest threat to the Chiefs. And that they still won nine games last year with the ninth most difficult strength of schedule. And Joe Burrow was not playing for more than half the season. So now they have the fourth easiest strength of schedule. Burrow's back. You got Higgins for one more year, it seems like. Jamar Chase, I, they better figure out this drama before Sunday. He better be in the starting lineup week <laughs> one, figure, figure it out. Apparently he wants one more penny than Justin Jefferson. But, you know, I have a feeling that they're going to get it figured out. Joe Burrow's going to talk to Jamar. They're going to be ready to roll. And if the offensive line can improve, because Burroughs never had a good offensive line and pass protection in front of him, which they did draft it, Armarius Mims. They brought in Trent Brown at tackle. So I think there is a chance that the Bengals can be the number one seed in the AFC. And if they are, Joe Burrow, MVP. I think he lights it up this year. Sneaky to lead the league in passing yards. Wow. Plus 900. Yeah, and he's plus 950 to win the MVP. Oh, 950. Okay, yeah. so it moves from once I did it. I got plus nine, so that's nice. That's I, nice. I got the lot. I'm just gonna give the, the the odds of this recording at noon on a Monday, Labor Day weekend. This is when these odds are up. So yep. when Offensive. you're listening a couple days from now, don't be like, "What the fuck, Joe Burrow's plus 800." These guys are lying. Yeah, we moved the lines. That's what happened. Offensive Player of the Year, <laughs> Reagan. Who do you got? Yeah, so I went back and forth a bunch on this one. Um, obviously, you know, we expect Tyreek Hill, McCaffrey to be some big dogs. But you know what? I'm going to go back to the well. I'm going to go with my guy, Omnira, again. I took him last year at plus 3,500. I said, hey, maybe he gets it done if he gets over 100 yards. Or, I mean, 100 catches. He did. Over 1,500 yards. He did. Over 10 touchdowns. He did. He didn't end up winning because there's guys like Tyreek. But I think he's still got more to his game where he can get up to that next level where maybe he gets 15 touchdowns. Maybe he's 125 catches. And maybe he's pushing 2,000 yards. I don't think he'll break it. But I think we'll be closer to 2,000 than the 1,500. So I'm going with my guy, St. Brown, this year of the Omnira. I'm super excited. <laughs> Omnira. Of he's, the Omnira. Just add an N in there. There's no N. It's Omnira. You're like Omnira. <laughs> Omnira. <laughs> What's the odds on Omnira? <laughs> uh, I am the Rock. Uh, he is currently plus 1,800. Wow. Okay. Okay. I went with C D Lamb, which it, his odds are plus 1,000. Plus 1,000. I'm seeing a trend in CeeDee Lamb's game. Rookie year in 2021, 79 catches, 1,100 yards, 6 touchdowns. 2022, 107 catches, 1,359 yards, 9 touchdowns. Last year, 135 catches, 1,749 yards, 12 touchdowns. It's all on the incline. What did Dallas do? They didn't bring in anyone that's going to compete with targets for CeeDee Lamb. No, they did not. They're running the band back. Right? This offense that was a juggernaut last year, particularly at home. So, C.D. Lamb, I'm just going to ride the ride the trend line, baby. Ride the trend line up to the top. C.D. Lamb will eclipse Tyreek Hill this year in receiving yards. He will lead the league in receiving yards. He will have 15-plus touchdowns. He will be the offensive player of the year. I love it. I love it. Drock just texted me. Can you send me the link for questions? No, Drock. We're already uh... – Yeah, thanks, Drock. <laughs> You know, th thank you, buddy. I know it's your mom's birthday, so shout out to Mama Drock. But, <laughs> but you're uh, you're a little late for those questions. But it's all right. Make a couple clips, and you, everything is forgiven. Yeah. Um, Defensive uh, player of the year. Yeah, I got Max Crosby at plus seven hundred. I think he finally breaks through. I think he gets in. He's been kind of the fifth guy in that top four conversation. It's always been Bosa, Garrett, Watt, and Parsons. But I think Crosby, you can make a case that he's right there with those guys. I mean, he's a great run stopper. I think the sacks are going to be above fi fifteen this year, and I think that addition of Christian Wilkins is going to help him out so much because 
hey, you can't double Crosby every time when you got a stud like Wilkins on the interior. So I think that's going to open up a lot more for him. I think the sacks are going to go up, and I think the run stops are going to go up, and I think those two are going to both be all pros this year together. Yeah, you, you mentioned something where you need to get above that 15 sack mark. It just has to happen for mm-hmm. anybody to win this award, given that Watt, Garrett, and Parsons have all pushed up there, and Bosa. I went with Aiden Hutchinson. Plus a thousand. He's coming off nine mm-hmm. and a half sacks as a rookie, eleven and a half in year two. He imp- very good in the run game as well. They added DJ Reader on the interior, which should help him get more loose. And I think you need at least seventeen sacks to get it done, given the caliber of pass rushers we have. But Hutchinson can take that step, and the Lions will be a dominant team in the league. I think he's their best player on defense. So for Hutchinson, he's going to need to get 18, 17, 18 sacks. But I think he can do it. Has that big year three jump. Aiden Hutchinson at plus a thousand. I like it. I like it a lot. More of a dark horse. Offensive rookie of the year, Reagan. Yeah, I mean, I don't I, I think it's going to be Caleb. I took Caleb. I'm but, just letting you know. If the Bears make the playoffs like we both anticipate, Caleb Williams is going to win the award. He's plus one thirty five. I, I and this is a terrible point to make, but I just think that this is the year of the first overall picks where they just get it done. Uh we saw it with Wembenyana in the NBA, we saw it with Bedard in the NHL. <laughs> Uh, we're going to see it with Skeens most likely because I think even if him and Merrill are close, they're going to give it to Skeens. He's the poster boy that the MLB is trying to promote. So I think why go against it and try to big brain it? Why try to go get those crazy odds when Caleb Williams is coming into the best situation we've ever seen a first overall pick quarterback come into? He's got amazing weapons around him. We expect him to have a great season. Uh, so I'm not going to overthink it here. I'm going to go Caleb Williams. Yeah, quarterbacks are just going to win it over wide receivers, especially yeah. if you lead a team to the playoffs. And the Bears are a way better position to do that than the Commanders or the Broncos, where the other two rookie quarterbacks are starting. So for me, it's got to be Caleb Williams here. All right, Reagan, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Who do you got? So this one, I kind of went for a little juice here. I went with Quinion Mitchell for the Eagles. I knew you were going Mitchell. Knew it. Um, obviously, with the news of Bradbury, right? Didn't Bradbury just Bradbury's get out? out six to eight weeks? So that was huge. But they moved him to safety already. No, Bradbury? Yeah. Ah, well, still. That, that, that Regardless, I, I, with all that news, Quinion Mitchell, in my opinion, was the best corner. I was shocked that the Eagles got him, but that's just Howie Roseman's luck. It seems like they always get a great value with their draft picks. Some guy falls, and they end up getting the pick. So I really liked him at Toledo. Uh, I'm super excited for what he can do. One of the biggest issues with his team last year was their secondary. So if he is able to step in, and I'm not saying play at a sauce gardener type level, but if he's able to step in, uh, get a couple interceptions, really prove that he's a starting caliber corner in this league, maybe pushing for a Pro Bowl spot. I think it's his award to win. I think the fact that there's not a lot of big edge rushers from this class this year. Obviously, we didn't even see a defensive player take until, was it 15 or 16? Uh, yeah, Latu, Latu was first by the Colts at 15. And he's got injury concerns with the Colts and stuff, um, just because that's why he fell a lot too. So I think it's wide open this year, and I'm going to go with him at plus 1,600. I love the value. He actually... Um, he kind of he's kind of sliding back because he was I saw him as as low as plus a thousand. So yeah, I went with Latu Latu right after you said <laughs> you're staying away. I think he's the most polished pro ready pass rusher in this draft. Although I think Dallas Turner has a higher ceiling, and those are the two guys I was predicting. Uh, you know, for me, Byron Murphy, I like him a lot as a player, yep. but Seattle just has veterans on the interior already, so I don't know how much he's going to play compared to Latu where. He should be stepping in and having a big role immediately on this Colts team. And he was plus 450, which was right around the same as Dallas Turner. So, for me, I just think Indianapolis needs the pass rush help right now. He's the most pro-ready. Yeah, the injury concerns, he did medically retire, but we've also seen the same thing happen with Jalen Phillips, and he came in the league and was really productive initially. So, I see a similar fate for Latu Latu, plus 450. All right, all right. Coach of the year. Yeah, there's actually a lot of guys I like. I mean, the nice thing about this award is there's nobody that's, like, crazy value. Like, plus 850, uh, Ibrahim and Harbaugh are the favorites at plus 850. So, that's nice for that aspect. So, no matter what, you're going to be getting great value. But I'm going with Raheem Morris at plus 1,300. Um, I think Atlanta's going to get into the playoffs this year. Um, he's a guy that's, you know, finally getting, finally getting the job. He's coming into a good situation. The defense, obviously, we were talking about early on, shaky, but they've made some moves. Uh, obviously, getting Judon, massive offensively um they've just addressed it weapon after weapon the past three years so i think the addition of kirk cousins will be huge and i think this is a team that's going to win the division and be fighting for one of those top seeds come playoff time yeah for coach of the year i always look for teams that 
I'm projecting to overachieve given their preseason expectations. Not necessarily, oh, well, the Chiefs are going to win 12 games, so John Harbaugh or Andy Reid or Nick Sirianni, like those teams you predict are going to be good and they have good seasons. You're more thinking overachieving. I went with Shane Steichen plus 1,800. If I am right and the Colts win the South and Anthony Richardson takes that step, Shane Steichen will be in the thick of things. We saw how much the Eagles missed him last year running the offense, and he was able to put Gardner Minshew in a position to be successful and Zach Moss in a position to be successful last year when they didn't have their starting quarterback and running back. So with everyone back, I think the Colts are going to win the division, and if I'm right, Shane Steichen, offensive, not offensive, coach of the year. Yeah, no, I like that one a lot, especially like, like you said, if they win the division where – Right now, the Falcons are the favorite. The Colts are not the favorite. I mean, you could – I think they're second, but Jack, Jacksonville's right around that same area yeah. with them. So, I mean, and, and I would say right now that's a tougher division. So, yeah, it would be very impressive if he's able to get him in and take another step forward. Comeback player of the year to wrap us up, Reagan. I got to go with my boy Rodgers. I, I was I honestly wanted to go with Kirk, and I was thinking about Burrow. But it, it's just going to go to Rod. Like, it's just – it's the whole media thing. They just don't shut up about the Jets. I'm a Jet fan, and they, they don't shut up about it. I mean, he played four snaps last year. Obviously, a major Achilles injury, but the age is such a big factor where Burrow and Cousins, even though Cousins is getting up there, he's not in his 40s. So if Rodgers is able to return, get the Jets into the playoffs and end the longest active playoff drought in all the major four sports, I think they're just going to give it to him by default. And there's a reason why he's plus 140. So, But then again, DeMar was like minus like 200 or 300 last year coming into the season. And slanging that thing took that from him. So <laughs> Flacco, yeah. So, so for me, for DeMar, though. this one's tough because, like, if I'm predicting Joe Burrow to be the MVP, he's the second favorite for comeback player of the year. Like, could he win both? If you are the MVP, will they give you comeback player of the year as well, or will they diversify and just give it to Aaron Rodgers if the Jets make the playoffs? So, I don't know. I'm going to go Joe Burrow at plus 275 as my comeback player of the year, but I can also see myself getting burned if Burrow does win MVP and they give this award to someone else. Like, Kirk yeah. Cousins or Aaron Rodgers, which Aaron Rodgers make a lot of sense with all the media hype, you know, especially on ESPN with Mike Greenberg. I mean, I don't want to, I can't watch that show anymore. I can't watch him. No, it's no, just, like it's all name. Jets, dude. It's J- all and Jets. Dallas, it's your and two Dallas. favorite teams. It's Jets and Dallas. I can't stand either team. So yeah, I'm, I'm over that. I can't watch it. But the media coverage would say Aaron Rodgers is rightfully so the favorite. Yeah. Plus just the age is such a huge aspect because I do think Burrow could win the MVP, but you know, just he's still in his prime, you know, it's not like. It's not like he's this aging guy where it would be, like, more impressive. So Yeah, I got gotcha. you. All, All right. right, that wraps it up. We'll be back later the week. Week one predictions, baby. We're here three days away. I, know, I can't believe it. Can't Holy wait. shit. Holy can't shit. Wait. Let's go win some fantasy leagues. What do you guys say? Let's go make some money this year. Come on now. Woo, money. Just give me my money. Money, money, money.